Hi guys, welcome back to the Sociology channel. I am PL. Once again, thank you very much for those who have listened uh, to my past two videos. One about the introduction of who George Simmel really is and his basic ideas. And number two in my video, it is basically about the social types, sociology of senses and different types of association. From there, I will be making another video upon the more detailed type of association but for now, we will be moving on to his culture and ideology. As a note, for those who have watched my first video, I told you guys that we will be talking about the philosophy of money and uh, tragedy of culture in more detail. And this is the video where you can find that information. So just as a brief understanding, George Simmel is a dialectical thinker. He believes that if one side were to happen, then there must be an effect as well. And this, for example, can be found in his idea of culture. In Simmel's case, culture also acts as another example of duality. In other words, people's individuality are shaped by their own cultural products. But at the same time, they are also the ones who shape cultural products. Upon this duality, uh, he brings up the idea of subjective or individual culture versus objective culture. So what does he really mean by that? Is that for humans to create satisfaction in this world, they need to express their creativity by creating something else, something more material, in a sense where you are able to touch, feel, or smell. And that is what he means by objective culture. To further emphasize the idea, think about you wanting to create something new in this world. Phones, cars, radios, computers, motorbikes, new technologies. However, Simmel states that it is impossible for you to create such things if you only think with your creativity. You need to take action and make it into reality. Be more materialistic. However, when you transition from that creative idea you are turning it into a material that can change culture, that can change the way other people think in the future. In the old times, when phone d does not even exist, people still had interaction, formal interactions, right? In the dining table, no one plays th with their phone because it is considered rude or no one reads newspaper. But when the phone came out, the smartphone especially, people started playing in front of each other and not really caring what's happening as long as they're up to date with their social media. And this is very clear to Simmel that the things that we create changes us, changes the way we know, the way we think, and the way we see things. So that is basically the main idea of subjective or individual culture versus objective culture. All right, I hope you guys understood what I was trying to say by that. If you don't, please write something in the comment or yeah, please do ask questions because question is the foundation of answers. All right, now because you guys have understood the foundation, we can move on to the tragedy of culture. So what Simmel is trying to say here is that in the modern world, objective culture, the materials that we create, eventually locks our creativity out and hence making everything much more objective. To recap, Simmel's tragedy of culture is quite similar to Marx's understanding of alienation, where he states that people in the modern world are already alienated by, under the capitalist system. People no longer care about the labor, rather they care more about the products produced. All right, going back to what Simmel meant by tragedy of culture, apart from objectivity winning against the sub more subjective one, is that humans lose the capability to control the culture that has been made by themselves. For example, languages. Because of globalization, dialects and more cultural languages are dying. Instead, it is referring to a much more homogenic one. Furthermore, Simmel uses another example of light. Humans in their natural state are supposed to wake up in the morning until and sleep at night because they can't do any activities under simply a moonlight 
that shines over them. You know, everything is dark. However, with the invention of lights, people's way of life has changed quite significantly, where they are able to work more and more um, at night, and hence more and more activities are reliant on the invention of lights. However, uh, it is also important to note that despite this, of over-reliance on things that we have made by ourselves, um, there are indeed loads of positive aspects to it. For example, it helps humanity to save more lives and boost development of social life. The development of healthcare, the development of economic system and political system has helped people to understand and maximize their potential in life. To compile those examples, we can say that the objective culture becomes more and more linked to each other in a self-contained world, which has increasingly made fewer contacts with the individual subjective creativity. We are able to see this with science and rationality. We integrate science and rationality to literally everything. Computers, um, way of life, you know, efficiency, time, and also methods of studying. Now, because of these things growing rapidly, Simmel takes this as a tragic. Because humans are unable to deviate from the objective culture. It is also evident when we go to cities, uh, we are able to see the objective culture being the main aspect, being the center of everything. We no longer appreciate people for their creativity, rather we appreciate the institution. For example, we see Oxford and Cambridge being a really great institution and whoever can enter becomes great. This certainly shows us that institutions are now seen as a glorified object rather than the people. However, following Simmel's dual or dialectical thinking, um, human creativity will always be ahead of its culture meaning that there will always be deviance towards an objective culture. We are able to see this from the example of fashion that we discussed in the introduction video. Hopefully, you guys have really understood about the tragedy of culture in the most simplest way. In relation to the tragedy of culture, um, a very important subtopic that must be discussed is the philosophy of money made by Simmel. He states that in the modern world, money and its economy in general is believed to have profound effects on the nature of human relationships. In the old times, money is said to be the root of all evils. Why? It's because they can change the way people think. In other words, money is a specific phenomenon that involves many components of life. Greed, exchange, ownership, investment, and etc. In his idea of the philosophy of money, Simmel saw money as a structuring agent that helps us understand the totality of life. Everything can be related to money in the modern world, whatever you see, even to an extent. Uh, in the early days of modernity, humans can be bought, and now humans can be bought as services. If we pay attention closely, to how does money take and value. So according to Marx, it is the capitalist who determined what is considered to be more expensive. However, Simmel takes this in a more micro point of view. He says that the value of materials is determined by smaller social interactions, such as efforts, time, sacrifice. Objects that are too close are not considered valuable and objects that are too far for people to obtain are not considered valuable as well. We can see that the, these two examples uh, relate to the types of association that we have discussed in the second video. However, it is very important to note that Simmel wants us to understand, despite having relative values of things, such as efforts, time, because these are all relative, right? If you have more better technology, then obviously it's faster compared to those who have less technology. What makes money very significant is the universal system of monetary. The monetary system creates a bind 
to all these smaller interactions. So what does he really mean by the monetary system? As money and transaction increases, the independence of an individual decreases as he or she is drawn into a holistic network of exchange governed by quantifiable monetary value. In other words, to put it in simpler idea, everything becomes quantifiable. Everything can be calculated, everything can be counted, and everything, and everything can be measured. And hence, forcing people into a world where without understanding quantity, they are unable to do anything with their lives. Which means they are locked up in a cage where a rational money-making system has already infiltrated their lives. However, it is also notable that paradoxically, with more money, we can attain more freedom in a way to express ourselves. We can purchase these things and express ourselves through it. The reification of money value helps to create a faster rate of rationalization. We are able to see from here that the tragedy of culture is the foundation of the philosophy of money. Because in the old times, everything is based on trade, trust, and barter, right? So we are able to see that in modernity, there is a movement from quality to quantity. It helps to create the concept of efficiency and calculability. Products that used to be for more or less very difficult to attain, with rationalization, they are able to double that and makes pretty much a market that has been controlled in a more universal and global stance. It is no lo prices are no longer relative, now it is more universal, just to put it simply. And obviously there are loads of other negative effects of money. I'm just going to state three more things. Number one is the increase of cynicism, where social life is for sale. Not only people, but also love and secrets, right? Love and secrets can be bought now. So it's not only people's services or in long ago slavery, but love can be bought. Prostitution and secrets can always be bought. CIA agency. Number two is increase in blase attitude which I will talk in the next video upon the more specific types of association. Blase is basically everything becomes formless and purely determined by quantity, meaning that if it doesn't give anyone benefit, then they won't uh, interact with anyone, really. That's what he meant. Number three is the loss of non-rational. For example, love. Love, as I've said, can be bought, and so with that, um, love by its natural state of simply loving without any conditions of having the guy or girl to be rich or having a high status. However, it is also very important for us to note that even though we depend on each other even more, we know less about who they are as individuals because of the blase and loss of non-rational. All right, now we will be getting into a much more complex idea of exchange as a form of association, exchange as a form of social interaction. But the main question is, how does exchange be an um, element that initiates social interactions? Now, we should look at it in the most basic way. Exchange can only happen in modern times through money, right? And because of that, money becomes a key element in exchange, where it can be literally exchanged to everything. Anything can be money, right? The main concept in this is that money is the means that brings one aspect to connect to the other aspect. The freedom of choice for an individual, for example, through exchange value allows humans to achieve whatever goal they want to become. And this is where this phrase comes in. Money is not everything, but without money, you are nothing. We are also able to see this from 
Simmel's example of the metropolis, where highly varied changing objects and forms allows the human spirit to experience new things and allows more distinct identity to exist, especially within a homogeneic society with the use of money. Indeed, with greater freedom, it, there is also certainly a downside to it. In the metropolis, humans become overly excited. In order to save their energy and excitement, they have to keep their distance from people, also known as the blase attitude, which forbids real association to be created because they now they see the people as merely objects of hindrance. This is very different from a small town that is basically based on emotional affection and pure relationships without any thoughts of advantages or being overly calculative. In relation to freedom, I would like to emphasize on another concept that is very important and significant to Simmel's work, individualization. In modernity or modern era, individuals are actually enslaved by the concept of individuality. People may think that they buy things to express, but really, as we know from the case study of fashion, really, they're just, it's just a part of life. And to further exacerbate the problem, Simmel suggests that we are much more isolated because of the money economy. He further believes that in modern society, individuals' membership in society overlaps, since the groups are based on elective. Individuals are likely to associate themselves with two or more groups. Why? Because there is more autonomy. There is no single set of association that monitors their choice. In other words, this is known as a web of group affiliation that breeds greater individual identification. In the more traditional society, groups are already determined as the individual membership is naturally positioned in a larger kinship group. A family could be associated with the quality of education and religious unit. Right? We all know that. Take in medieval or feudal system, where families are already located where they are, and it is very difficult, if not impossible, to attain social mobility, where they are able to have accomplices and cooperations with other people apart from their class. However, in a more rationalized um, society, since everything, as I've said, is much connected, the objective culture is connected to each other, and rationalization becomes the means of that connectivity, um, it creates a very important aspect known as value pluralism, where there will be contradictions of moral beliefs, hence creating an uncertain identity towards one another. You, in reality, don't know who you truly are. Why? Because under rationalization, everything that you see, that you study, are all connected in some way. Subjects such as religion and subjects such as sciences that you've learned from both um, have very differing values. One states that humans come from evolution, one states that humans are from an image of God. And so this makes you confused about who you are or what is going on in this world, which is why new movements come out. Atheism, agnosticism, and obviously um, other different cults in, from a religious point of view. And so this is one massive consequence of modernity, apart from the philosophy of money and tragedy of culture. Well, I hope you guys understood that point. If you still don't, please write in comments and I will try my best in my spare time to help you guys answering the questions that you guys are still confused about. But now, because we are coming to an end, I would like to stay some criticisms about George Simmel. So I think the first thing that needs to be criticized is obviously 
to say that his theory is barely practical. Yes, indeed, he gives some feedbacks, he gives some perspectives on uh, micro interactions, but really, is it really practical? Because smaller and micro interactions relate much more towards psychological and individual personality. It cannot simply be explained and fixed by his explanation of or criticizing that humans are stuck in a loop of objective culture domination is clearly um, not reliable in that sense because obviously we are able to see that games, uh, shoemaking, watchmaking relates very much with creativity in real life, yeah. Another possible criticism that I've thought of is that he is far too micro. Unlike Marx or Weber or um, other thinkers, this man is only sees the world in a very, very small idea. Economy, for example, according to Marx, really does play a very important role. Weber claims that religion plays a very important role. This man, Simo, just explains that, oh yes, um, he is, the world is merely a social interaction and that's the end. Although it is notable that he does give some valid points of micro sociology, that it is also important, but nonetheless he does lack macro. Another aspect um, is that he does not give any solution to the tragedy of culture and assumes that it is simply the human nature that modernity existed. I think this is a great way to criticize him because he only assumes that we don't have creativity at all, you know, um, that we are stuck in loop of Iron Cage, Weber's Iron Cage or objective culture in a sense. Um, in reality, we do still have power, we do still have the change, we can change, we emphasize a lot on our creativity. For example, making this video, the invention of YouTube allows us to emphasize our creativity even more. Well, those are just some very simple criticisms that can help you get a general idea and to summarize and revise of what we have talked about. Well, in the next video, I will be talking about um, the more specific associations and I hope it's a short one because this video is pretty long for explanation. I hope I, you guys have understood what I'm trying to explain. Nonetheless, I hope I will see you guys uh, next time in the other video and hopefully this has helped you and your understanding of George Simmel. Continue to learn, continue to strive, keep working hard because these knowledge are very significant to our contemporary society. See you later guys. Thanks.